to our December Bible study. My name is Micah Tank and I am one of the pastors at Scottsboro Cumberland Presbyterian Church in Scottsboro, Alabama. I serve alongside my husband, the Reverend Brian Tank, and the two of us together have the honor and the privilege of co-pastoring this church. And today I'm really excited uh, to be sharing with all of you as we walk through our December Bible study together. The theme for December is because love came down at Christmas, we can walk in love. This is a truth that finds us in the middle of the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season. It's a truth that also finds us in what has been a very strange year, a year of sorrow, a year of pain, a year of worry, a year of isolation. Because love came down at Christmas, we can walk in love. We hinge this truth perhaps on the most beloved scripture passage that we have of all time, John 3.16, the verse that children learn when they're young and one of those scripture passages we often memorize. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is a verse memorized and loved and preached about often in many churches. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And as I reflect on this verse and our idea that when, when um, Jesus comes down at Christmas time, we can walk in love, when I think about those ideas, I think about this, that to be a love giver means we have to receive love. We learn about love from those who love us. We learn about love from uh, our parents or our spouse or even our children, our friends, our communities. We understand love through the ways in which we receive love from others. And when we look at love that way, we can see that love will always be imperfect. Uh, we learn our understandings about love from people that are imperfect, and other people learn about love from us, and we are imperfect. Except for the love that we receive from Jesus Christ. That's our example of a perfect love. And so if you look at the life of Jesus, we learn that to love, if we base it off of the life of Jesus, to love would mean to dwell with other people. It is to be with them, like Jesus was with people, like Jesus came in the flesh to be with us. We learn from Jesus that to love is to actively walk with them, not just to passively think about them, but to walk with them from day to day. We learn from Jesus that to love is to serve one another, to love is to listen. There is this uh, word that we often use in the church, amen. We say it a lot uh, because we often pray a lot in churches and it's how we end many prayers. And amen often says more than we can with our words alone. Amen says more than words can say, amen says, man, that music sounded like the angelic chorus was singing along with you. Amen says, I came here searching for something today, but I didn't know that that's what I needed. Amen says something that is so much deeper than words. God's amen to the world is in Jesus Christ. God's amen to the world is a baby. God, you see, littered the entire Old Testament with these promises, promises of restoration and promises of renewal. God littered the Old Testament with promises of salvation for his people. And then he sent a baby. A baby that was his amen to the world. Amen it means truth. Amen it means so be it. And God sent this baby to earth at Christmas time, a baby that said, so be it. That baby came to bring about restoration no matter the cost. That baby came to draw near to God's people no matter the insults or the hatred. 
That baby came to save us, even to the point of death on a cross. So be it. If this is the cost, so be it. That's the testimony of Jesus' birth and Jesus' life on earth. Everything that Jesus did, the way he lived, was a resounding amen. This resounding, so be it, from God to his people. No matter the cost of loving you, no matter the cost of saving you, so be it. That's a love deeper than any we've ever known or any we could ever know. That's a love that knows the cost and steps in anyway. That's the kind of love that we are called into. We receive this reckless, larger-than-life love from God, and then we're called also to share it with others. Because love came down at Christmas, we can walk in love. That means we are sent out to walk with others. We are sent out to walk with our families. We are sent out to walk with our friends, with strangers, with people we don't know, with people who simply need help. We are to walk, actively walk, with others through life. Because in the end, we too are to be God's amen to the world. God sends his amen to the world in the form of a baby born on Christmas Day. And then through the Spirit's help, we too are sent out as God's amen to the world. And if we're honest, we all know that that's not an easy task. It's not an easy call to be God's amen in this broken and, and desperate world. But to build God's kingdom on earth is a call we must live into. Hard as it may be, it's a call that we must live into. So this Advent, we will look for hope and for peace and for joy and for love along the way as we prepare our hearts for the birth of Jesus Christ, as we prepare our hearts for the Advent of Jesus. And this year, of all years, the year 2020, there will be some people who desperately need to see and to hear and to feel the love of God in a deep way. This is an advent where God's amen must come from God's people. Walking in, in love might look something like writing letters to homebound members uh, from your church, contacting your pastor, figuring out who it is that's felt lonely or isolated that could use a card. Or walking in, in love this year might look something like finding a local food pantry and figuring out what their needs are and how you can plug into those needs, how you can be helpful, especially in a season that's usually dependent on um, people being able to go to food banks and being served foods on, on the holidays. And a lot of those things are being stripped away this year. So how can you be a part of the solution? And, and walking in love this year might be something like sending a care package or, or a gift to those that you know have felt extremely isolated or sick throughout the past couple of months. And just because our walking now looks different, it doesn't mean there isn't walking to be done. On December 24th, Christmas Eve, we will proclaim again this beautiful mystery of faith that God has sent his son to earth to be born on Christmas Day in the form of a baby to save us and to save the whole world. And we will celebrate that God has sent his amen in the form of the Christ child. But to be receivers of that kind of love from God, we must also be givers. So go out in this season of Advent, to love others in the way that Christ has loved us. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we believe that you sent your Son, and that whoever believes in you will have eternal life. And Lord, we believe that in the sending of your Son, you have given us the perfect example of love, of what it means to walk with others, to dwell with others, 
to serve, and to listen. And Lord, we ask that throughout this Advent season, you might open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to see the ways in which we can serve others, to see the ways in which we can walk in love in the same way that you have taught us. Lord, send us out to be kingdom builders. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.